This is Twit. A group known as Intel 421 published a report. I've got two pieces of sort of what I called ransomware meta news. Um, as we have unfortunately been observing, the ransomware business, and I put it in quotes in my notes, is booming. Uh, you know, I don't like calling it a business, but that's what it is. Um, but we've been looking at this, you know, like one case at a time, one piece of ransomware at a time. And so it, it occurred to me that it's easy to lose sight of the forest when we look too closely at the individual trees. When we pull back and take in the entire scope of what's been evolving, somewhat unseen, what we have is a bit startling. These guys report on that. Um, the question they answer, how many ransomware as a service, you know, that's our acronym, R-A-A-S, ransomware as a service, operations are there today. We've touched on the comings and goings of a few of them, but a comprehensive review finds that there are presently more than 25 separate RAAS, ransomware as a service portals, now in business, in the business of renting ransomware for use by other criminal gangs. The group, this group, Intel 421, published their report yesterday titled Ransomware as a Service, the Pandemic Within a Pandemic, you know, talking about the whole COVID-19 thing and like this has been happening this year. Um, their report was not highly detailed, but it was illuminating. Um, and, and as I said, I like, I dislike legitimizing this by calling a business, but this is the way it's developing. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's dark. It's, it's mal. It, it's, it's, it's criminal, but it's a bit, it's an enterprise. Um, and I guess it's not really surprising that what would be revealed, and this was in their report, is a hierarchy of players. Um, a few at the top who are pulling down the lion's share of the extortion revenue. Um, that, you know, they, they use the word profit, but I, it just doesn't feel right to call it profit. So it, you know, it's extortion-based revenue. Um, there's also a much larger base of wannabe players who are in the quote business, they are, they've got portals, they're hoping to make their mark uh, and then get cut in for a piece of this action. So, you know, in looking through this report, I did note that this podcast had not missed anything. The big players noted by Intel 421's research are Doppelpamer, uh, E. Grigor, Ragnar Locker, Revel, and Ryuk. <laughs> they need All some the better vulnerability names. <laughs> I know where you get them, yes, too. Does. <laughs> um, uh, you know, so those are the guys at the top of the pyramid making the lion's share of the money. Um, the one thing this research does show is that, that there are those other 20 Me Too players who are working hard to move from the also ran to the pay us now or else category, uh, they may not stay as second tier players forever. So, you know, we'll keep an eye on the news and see how this go. M, the second piece of meta news about ransomware, you just had to shake your head. Uh, Ragnar Locker took out a Facebook ad. <laughs> wow i know i know it's also Last by the week, way a pretty good name i do like ragnar ragnar locker. Ragnar locker yeah yep last week we mentioned their successful ransomware attack on the italian distiller campari and their publication at the time of the contract between wild turkey one of one of campari's brands and matthew mcconaughey <laughs> It appears that this gang is into shaming their victims oh, as a means of inducing payment. Oh, and I suppose this is the logical next step. Sure. You know, eventually companies are going to become 
more able to recover from the original, simpler, local ransomware encryption attacks, right? You know, I mean, like, they're going to, like, with this in the air as much as it is, and we've talked about, you know, the CEOs are going to be looking at their CIOs saying, we can survive one of these, right? You could, like, everything's backed up. If this happens to us, you'll get us back online quickly. And the CIO says, yeah, you know, we t- we've got that all set up last month or the month before, whenever. So it's foreseeable that that the the effect of the original we'll give you the decryption key extortion may be weakening over time. So get this. After obtaining two terabytes of sensitive data, uh, of sen- sensitive data, which was stolen, dur- stolen during their November 3rd attack, which was exactly two weeks ago today, and demanding a $15 million ransom paid in Bitcoin, the Ragnar Locker gang have used a compromised Facebook account to take out by public Facebook ad threatening to publicly release the sensitive Campari data, remember they got two terabytes of it, unless the ransom is paid. So apparently this new tactic is intended to publicly shame and pressure the ransomware victim into paying, even if they don't so much need the decryption keys. uh, You know, they don't want it known that two terabytes of potentially sensitive data is loose. The compromised Facebook account belonged to a Chicago-based DJ by the name of Chris Hodson. Chris believed that all of his online accounts had been protected by two-factor authentication, but it turned out that he missed one. Facebook. Jeez. Brian Krebs, (laughs) Brian Krebs, who reported on this, wrote that Chris said a review of his account showed the unauthorized campaign reached approximately 5,150 Facebook users. So 7,150 Facebook users and generated a, an impressive 770 clicks, over 10%, with a cost per click of 21 cents. Wow, Chris that's said good. Face- wow. Yeah. Chris said Facebook billed him $35 for the first part of the campaign, but apparently detected the ads as fraudulent before his account could be billed another $159 for the campaign. So we have a new wrinkle (laughs) added to the ransomware scenario. Ransomware games who get into a corporate network are going to first exfiltrate as much data as they can. Then they will deny its owner's access by encrypting it in their wake, because, like, why not? Uh, Encryption is easy now. Then they contact the victim and demand payment, not only for providing the master decryption key, but also to threaten the release of their victim's sensitive corporate data with the newly added wrinkle that they might widely and publicly employ an advertising pressure campaign to up the ante and further coerce payment. And of course, you know, given that these attackers have already shown their true colors, I mean, right, they're criminals, uh, there's no reason to expect nor any means to enforce the permanent deletion of the sensitive stolen data. So it's a mess. On the other hand, we're sort of where we were before with the, with the, these gangs having it in their own best interest, much as they were actually giving decryption keys when ransoms were paid, you know, they have to honor their commitment to delete the data or at least never release it because if that ends up not being honored, then people just won't, you know, will have no, no additional incentive to pay the ransom. So it's a weird world we're in, but uh, (laughs) it's the one we've got. 